Hi there, I'm Robert Dancic. I'm here at the Cool Tools Studios in Wisconsin, and I'm going to be making a video about uh, using concrete in jewelry. I know it sounds like an odd material for jewelry making, but the concrete that I have come up with is actually lighter in weight than stone, polymer clay, metal, or almost any of the materials you would normally use in jewelry making. Uh, and um, it also it can be used in uh, many, many different ways. The first way that I'm going to be showing you is putting it into a box that I have made in a different video that I did with Cool Tools, a, a copper box that's fashioned with no soldering. It's all cold connected. And then uh, in subsequent videos, I'm going to be showing you how to use the same concrete, but using it in uh, silicone molds that you can either buy here at Cool Tools or make yourself with the silicone that they sell or um, virtually any rubber stamp that you have, and you can cast it into all of those things. And then there are a couple of other methods of working that don't even have a name yet that I'll be showing you to employ the concrete uh, to work with a lot of the work that you're already making in your jewelry. It will go with any kind of metal sheet that you're working with, wire, also with metal clay. And I have a number of pieces that are in some of the books actually about metal clay that already have this concrete with the metal clay. So in front of me here, I have a number of different pieces that I've made using the concrete where I pour it in. Uh, again, in subsequent videos, I'll be showing you about making uh, discrete objects out of concrete and then setting them. But these are ways that you can actually make boxes, settings, bezel settings, and use the concrete to fill those voids. So here I just have, this is just a stone. It's a box that I made uh, and uh, I uh, poured in some concrete. I actually dusted this with just a little tiny bit of iron filings. That's what that rust is that you're seeing there. Um, this is a tube set gemstone that I put in. Concrete is made to hold things together. So when you put things in, you don't really have to do anything except put it into the concrete and it'll stay. And you can use just about anything in the world to put into the concrete. If it's really sensitive, uh, like uh, some sort of ephemera or paper or something like that, you may need to coat it with a little bit of PVA glue or something like Mod Podge, uh, yellow glues. Uh, white glues don't work because they are water soluble after they dry, but any of the other ones will work. Varnishes, anything like that. So here I have a, a ready-made wing that I bought. This is a plastic gemstone, actually, uh, and this is a lens that I have that I put behind it a piece of uh, playing card. Uh, I have something that I actually made a little tiny collage. So there are two or three different pieces of paper I collaged onto the back of a lens, much like the ones that you're seeing here. And I put that into the, into the bezel and then poured the concrete in. This one is kind of nice because the concrete goes all the way through. So I just put this, I made this bezel and then stuck it down to the sticky side of tape and then filled up the concrete, peeled off the tape. Here's one that I made of those boxes again and I filled it up. This is a watch face and I took the watch out and put it down here. This is some glass with a little bit of a Xerox on the back. Again, you can put virtually anything into the concrete as long as it's sealed up. Another piece here with some things that are very much like I'm gonna be doing today with a little gear in here. This is a piece of broken bicycle reflector piece of glass. That's just the top of a rivet, a pre-made rivet that I put in. Uh, again, another lens. This is a, a brass washer that they sell here at Cool Tools. I love these things. And what I did is I actually took the, the washer and dapped it so that it had the same curve as the lens, like this right here, that I was going to use. Then I put a, an image behind it. The nice thing about the lens is that it magnifies virtually whatever is behind it. Um, so these are all different ways that you can actually make a container for the concrete and then inject into that whatever you'd like. So I'm going to be mixing up some of the concrete to pour into this box. This is a box that I made here at Cool Tools. This is part of their um, selection of textured metal. I just love the way that this works on the box here uh, because the back is as interesting as the front will be. And what I've done is I've done a little bit of edge work on this box. Uh, that's another video you can take a look at. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of the concrete and um, I'm just going to take a couple of spoonfuls. This is a fairly small box, so I know that it's not going to take too much concrete. So I'm going to start out with about two spoonfuls. I know that this is a lot more than I'm going to use. But what I'd like to do is uh, take a look at those were two teaspoons of, of clay, I'm sorry, of concrete, and take a look at the size of the box. It's about an inch and a quarter by about two and a quarter. So you can kind of get a barometer of how much concrete you would need to fill a specific form. Uh, when I make the concrete, I always add, I always mix a little bit more than I know that I'm going to need. So I always have some left over, but I don't run out, especially if I'm going to pigment the concrete because it's almost impossible to get exactly the same color again. Uh, and what I do then is I always have a few things ready like these stamps for the extra concrete. So if I have leftover, I will put it into something that I may use later on. And these rubber stamps, again, a uh, product of tool, uh, cool tools here, uh, these work perfectly. You don't have to spray it. You don't have to use any kind of release. You just put it right on the rubber. It peels off later. You'll see that uh, a little bit later on in the video. So I have my palette knife here. I also want to use something that's fairly clear. Any kind of clear plastic container is what I mix in because as I'm mixing, and you'll see this, it allows me to see if there are dry spots so that I can actually incorporate the dry concrete into the wetted concrete. These pigments that they sell here at Cool Tools are extremely powerful. So to tint this much, I'm actually going to use about that much green. So that's a very, very, it's not even a 16th of a teaspoon. And I'm just gonna put that in, much like cooking, I'm going to kind of mix the dry ingredients, but it's gonna disappear immediately. You're not gonna be able to see it because it's just clouded over with all of the concrete. When that gets wetted, you'll see the green starting to come out. I have tap water here. You do not need distilled water, special anything. You don't need an additive. It's extremely, extremely strong concrete, even down to a 16th of an inch. Uh, so you don't need any special water. You don't need any special anything. Uh, it's just tap water. I have one of these pipettes that I use, although I sometimes actually use a spoon. It's a little easier to use the pipette to, especially at the end, you'll see where I'm actually counting the number of drops that I add. For now, I'm just going to fill this up about halfway. That's a, probably about um, half a teaspoon to maybe three quarters of a teaspoon. I'm just going to put it in. And I know, just because I've used this so often, that it's going to take about one and a half of those just to get the process started. So I'm going to start mixing. And you're going to see it's, again, to use a cooking analogy, it's going to start separating, the, like if you're cutting shortening or butter into flour, and you get these little pea-sized shapes. And as I'm looking from the top, it all looks like it's already wet, but here's what I was talking about before. You see those light gray stripes? That is concrete that has yet to be wetted. So I want to make sure with that first application of water that I in incorporate all of those dry spots into my mix. Because if I were to not incorporate them now, Later on, if those dry spots were to be trapped inside the set and cured concrete, that would be a very weak spot. So now I'm going to start putting it in just a few drops at a time. That was about seven or eight drops. And the concrete is going to go with the addition of just a few drops from this kind of loose mixture. It's all going to come together, and I'm almost there, with the addition of just a few drops of water. The mistake that people make most often is adding too much water right from the beginning. So that was, again, about seven or eight drops, and that may be just about enough to have this start coming together. And it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start mixing this up quite thoroughly. And again, the clear cup allows me to see what I'm doing. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my palette knife over the concrete and I'm going to make sure that when I draw this over, it looks like it's just a little tiny bit wet. I can see the gloss of the wetness there. That means that the concrete has been wetted thoroughly. The green has yet to really start coming out uh, markedly, although as I'm looking down on it now, it is tinted just a little bit green. So if I can hold the gray next to that, you can see that the green has in fact been incorporated. So now I'm ready to put this in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add just one more drop of water 
maybe one, two, three. And believe it or not, those three drops are going to make this so that it kind of slides off of my palette knife nicely into that box and fills up all the little crevices. In the box, I stapled this end and riveted this end and just those little uh, protuberances of the rivet heads and this wire is actually going to grasp the concrete in there and make sure that it doesn't come out. So I'm going to take a little bit of my concrete and I'm just going to slide a little bit in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working that into the corners like that. You can see that it's quite wet on top. I'm looking for that. Okay, so I'm going to work it into the corners back at one end. And then I'm going to take another bit of concrete. I'm working it down into the corners of the box and the sides of the box here, where the floor of the box meets the sides. And I'm going to take just a little bit more to finish filling up that space. If you get a little bit on the top edges of the box or on the sides, I would suggest that you don't. I know it's going to sound counterintuitive, but don't try to wipe it off. Let it dry, and what will happen is, after it's dry, it will just slough right off. So I'm pretty well filled here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to tamp the bottom just a little bit. And what you're going to see is there are going to be some bubbles that start rising. I can do it this way or I can leave it on a table and kind of bang around it. But you see some of the bubbles that are rising up there. And I'll probably do it a little bit more. I can also do it this way. And it just vibrates that just ever so slightly so that those bubbles start to work their way to the surface. Now, for inclusions in this, I'm going to take a, um, a, a stamping that they sell here at, at Cool Tools. I love these gears. I could have oxidized this if I wanted to, but I kind of like that bright, shiny copper, especially with the oxidized copper of the box. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just sort of drop that right in the top here and just leave it. There are some times when you have certain objects that will actually start to sink down into the concrete. I know that this lens probably would sink down just because it's a little bit heavier. What I can do is I can actually affix a little piece of polymer clay on here. And when I put this in and I start rubbing that down so that it seats into the concrete, that polymer clay will make sure that that lens now is raised up and it can't possibly sink down. And what I'll do is I will just vibrate it a little tiny bit and the concrete will start flowing really nicely around the glass. This is starting to sink just a little bit. So what I can do is I can take my knife or any kind of tweezer or pointy object and I'll just raise it up a little bit and lay it back down on there. These little markings, because it's self-leveling, those will all go away. And I've got it. So what I will do now is I will let this set and cure. Set means that the chemical reaction between the water and the concrete is complete. That's set. And you're going to see that that, that slick water on top has disappeared. That's set. However, it has not achieved its ultimate hardness. That's called cure. And the set time is always shorter than the cure time. Unlike regular concretes you would buy at a store or um, any kind of Home Depot or any of those places, those usually take two days, at least two days, to set and cure. This is good to go in about an hour to an hour and a half. So um, I'm going to come back to this in about an hour and a half. And um, I'm going to show you about taking the skin, this slightly uh, shiny spot, uh, I'm sorry, this shiny surface off of the concrete to show a little bit more of the uh, concrete itself. They call it aggregate, the little particles that are in there that makes concrete look like concrete. So we'll be back in about an hour and a half to do that. So while that concrete in the box is setting and curing, I'm going to take my stamp here and I'm going to take the extra concrete that I had mixed and I'm just going to plop it right onto my stamp. 
and I can start working it down into some of these really fine lines and, and small spaces. And in a moment, I'll pick that up and tamp it down again. And the concrete will go down into the stamp and you'll see that I have the exact uh, positive or negative, however you think of it, of this stamp in the concrete, the surface of the concrete. The veracity of the, um, the image is, is almost perfect. Now, some of these very small spots, if the concrete is a little bit too thick, it won't go down in there. So what I do is, again, I will actually pick this up and tamp it a little bit like that, or I can actually thin this out ever so slightly so that it goes down into those very fine places. This is just kind of a general shape. I just plopped it on there. In another video, what I'm going to do is show you how I can take, roll out some polymer clay and cut a shape out of the polymer clay so that the polymer clay forms a wall and I can get a very specific shape with this in the concrete. And I will just continue to do this just a little bit. You see some bubbles coming up to the surface. And I think that I'm about there. So this will have a nice flat, flat back. So when I turn it over, I can set this, I can carve it. I can change the outside shape by grinding it, filing it, and lots of things that I'll show you in subsequent videos. So another way that you can uh, use the concrete is uh, I mentioned before into virtually any kind of mold that you have, especially the silicone molds. This happens to be a candy mold uh, with lots and lots of different um, shapes and designs in it. This is a mold here at uh, Cool Tools that they sell. They sell, a, I don't know how many they sell, but it's a really, really lot of these molds and they work flawlessly with the concrete. They also work perfectly with resin and lots of other materials. One of the uh, mold making materials that they sell are these little things that come with exactly the right amount of each one measured out for you already. And the way that it works is that I'm going to take out the white and the blue and I'm going to mix them together until I get a homogeneous color. And it's my big wonky fingers that can't get this out here. There it is. Okay. And the cool thing about the silicone is that it won't stick to anything and nothing will stick to it. And uh, I'm always amazed at how well this stuff works. So what I'm going to do, the twisting is, is really important for the mixing of this stuff. It homo uh, makes it homogeneous a little bit quicker. Whoops. That's part of the process right there. And you have to say whoops as well. So, And what I'm going to do again is just keep rolling this, folding it over, twisting it until I get one solid color with no streaks in it. You have just a few minutes to work with this before it starts to set. And once it sets, you, it's irreversible. So you want to make sure that you have everything ready. I'm making a mold of this die form piece of copper that I made. The die forming of copper is going to be yet another video that I'm making here at Cool Tools. And I think I'm about there. So I've got this. It's one solid color, no streaks in it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press over this. Depending on the object, sometimes you put the object into the mold. I'm sorry, into the silicone or sometimes you put the silicone over the object. And that's what I'm doing with this one. And I'm going to spread this out. I started in the middle and I want to spread it out this way, just pressing it down and corralling it up. And I'll try to make this kind of flat on the top only because I know when I go to pour concrete into it, it'll lay flat. When you have things like this, if it's not perfectly flat and level on your, on your desktop, what you can do is get a little container, put some rice in the container, and then uh, like the box that I made with the concrete, if you need to level it out, you can actually put it in the rice and just tilt it a little tiny bit and uh, adjust it so that it is perfectly level. This looks pretty good to me. And in just a few minutes, that's going to start to set up and become rubber and flexible just like this. And again, this won't stick to anything. If you even put it on your, if you have hair and you put it on your hair, it will actually make a mold of your hair. So you can make molds of really, really interesting things like in nature uh, or uh, you know, any kind of object, anything you want to make a mold of, you can with the silicone and it will work perfectly. 
So it's been a little while. It's been about 15 minutes or so um, until I let this set and that, that slick surface that had been on the concrete is gone now. The water has been absorbed and evaporated. And what I'm going to do now is I can leave it just like this. There's no right or wrong with this. I can leave it exactly as it is. It's kind of smooth. If I were to wax this later, it would be actually shiny and very, very smooth. Or I can start taking off what they call the skin of the concrete. The skin is the very finest particles of concrete that float to the top when you pour it in. And I've started to do it a little bit here on this piece that I did on the stamp. And as I start to take this away, what you're going to see is you're going to see little speckles. And that is the, what's called the aggregate, the little particles of solid stone that are mixed into the concrete. That's what makes concrete concrete. Without aggregate, it's called cement. Cement by itself is very, very weak. They put in this aggregate to increase the strength of the uh, concrete uh, so that um, all of the um, cement binds to all of these little particles and it increases the strength about 10 or 15 fold. And as I take this away, you can start seeing some of those little speckles. This looks a little bit more like the concrete that we're used to. So if you walk down the sidewalk, the next time you do that, and you look down, you'll actually see all of these little speckles in the concrete and they're odd sizes and odd shapes. And they do that especially uh, to, again, increase the strength of the concrete. So I know that this is gonna be fine. And uh, I did it on here before I went into my good piece to make sure that this was set and cured enough so that I won't be denting the uh, concrete. So I can go to my box now and I can start taking this away. The other thing that I can do is I can actually take it away from some parts, like down in here, and I may choose to leave this part as it is. That gives me a little bit more of a variegated surface, and I kind of like that variation sometimes. So I'll, I'd like to have the inside of this gear with the speckles showing, and then I'm going to leave the outside a little bit slicker. Maybe I'll take a little bit more off of here. See how I can really get very, very selective in designing this. And I can just take that and just slough that off. And you start seeing all of those little speckles to make it look a little bit more like concrete. So one thing that I didn't mention before is when I mix, I never throw out the concrete that I've mixed. The reason being, if I want to test this to see if it's ready to be um, wiped off with the brush, I can test it in here, the scrap, rather than going in here and possibly corrupting that surface. I will test it on here. It's the same thing. So I will test on here and I'll actually use this to test the strength of the piece as well. I'll crack off those little pieces. The other thing that I do with this is those little pieces kind of crack right off the sides very cleanly. And I can actually, I have a whole bag of these little different colored uh, little pieces of concrete that are already set and cured. I can take those and put it into wet concrete to get a variegated surface, almost like a mosaic. So I never throw out any of this stuff. So mixing a little bit is not wasting it. You just use it on down the line for other purposes. So here's the silicone mold that I put on before. And you can see that now it's nice and rubbery and springy. And I'm just going to peel that right off, comes right off, and I have a perfect image on here of that die form piece of copper. It even picked up the grid of the screen that I had roller printed onto the copper. So what I can do now is I can use this for virtually anything. And I have these other molds here. These two I made, and then these, this one is from uh, ready made from Cool Tools here. This is the same silicone that I just used. This is a reflector that I made a mold of. Uh, this is a, an old broken screen that I had. And uh, these molds cannot just be used for the concrete, but they're fabulous for resin and metal clay. This element here on top is made right out of this mold. And this is metal clay. And um, you can see that it's a little bit smaller than this. And that's because it's made of metal clay. The metal clay naturally shrinks just a little bit. The stuff here um, shrinks about 8 to 10 percent, I believe. And um, so I put the metal clay in there, took it out, never stuck or anything like that, and fired the clay. 
And so it can be used for any of those things or a mixture. There are times when I'll actually put resin in certain parts and then put concrete on it. And when I pull it up, I have the resin in the concrete already. And it's all made in a silicone mold and it will never stick. So another way that I use the concrete is to try to make discrete shapes out of them. And what I found is a really easy way of doing virtually any shape that I'd like is to take some polymer clay and I just rolled it out. It doesn't, the thickness isn't really terribly important. I usually come around around a quarter of an inch or so and I can fill that up or not fill it up depending on how I feel about it and the thickness of the concrete that I would like at the end. These are all around a quarter of an inch, maybe just a little bit less. So what I did is I rolled this out on a piece of paper so it doesn't stick to the table and I can just peel it right up. Then I'm going to place it on, I'm using a rubber stamp here, but this could be anything. It could be just a slick surface. It could be a textured surface. It could be a textured piece of metal, virtually anything that I want. Then what I'm going to do is I made this just a little bit smaller than what I ultimately want because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually roll this onto the stamp so that it presses down into the stamp just a little bit, doesn't have to be crazy. And now what I'm going to do is take any kind of cutter or I can take a needle tool. Lizelle in metal clay uses a pointy tool uh, from tool tools here. And uh, I use that a lot also if I'm making free forms, but this time I'm just gonna use a cookie cutter. They have sets of these here at cool tools and I'm going to take my cookie cutter and I will cut that and peel it up and I'll press it down again to make sure that it's seated into the stamp. If they're a little, I think schnibbelies is the technical term, uh, of clay, what I can do is I can just force them back into there with my palette knife. I also use my uh, X-Acto or the scalpel, and just so I have a nice, smooth, even edge at the bottom here. And now what I'll do is I will mix up my concrete, pour it in, and I will get that shape with that shape on the uh, bottom, but it, that will wind up being the top. So I did something just like that. I had it like this. I cut it square with the cookie cutter. This little edge, what I did was, and for these four around here, what I did is I actually took the corner of the cookie cutter and I just cut a little piece out, just like that. So. You don't have to settle for the shape of the cookie cutter. You can use that cookie cutter and start altering that shape. So that now winds up a completely different shape. It's no longer a simple diamond. I could also use another cookie cutter of a different shape to start cutting out little, um, little places for the concrete to flow as well and just change the entire shape of the cookie cutter rather than having it a cookie cutter shape. Uh, we use that term, you know, for something that's kind of ordinary, it's cookie cutter. So this gets away from that immediately. And now I would just mix up my concrete and I would probably mix this up ever so slightly thinner. So going back to the mixing of the concrete, when I got it exactly what I wanted, I might put in literally three more drops. I would actually count them. Those three drops will make it thin enough so that it'll actually go down and fill up all of those really, really small, tight spaces, just like this one. Okay, so I've got the concrete that I had poured into this rubber stamp here, and I've waited an hour and a half, two hours or so, and it is fully cured, uh, not dried, but fully cured, meaning that it achieves its ultimate hardness. And now what I can do is I'm just going to peel back the stamp, and what it reveals is a perfect cast of the concrete into the stamp. And now what I can do if I want to, I can actually take these edges a little bit, and I take an old, cheap, file and I can actually file that down and start changing the outside shape of this. I can do this with a file, I can do it with coarse sandpaper, I can do it lots of different ways. I can also put it on a wet grinder and do that, but just an old file will take that down right away. Thanks for watching this segment about using concrete in your jewelry. I hope it has opened your eyes to some of the possibilities. Uh, I'm fond of saying that concrete isn't just for sidewalks anymore. So you can start using this concrete in work that you've already done. Perhaps the next time you make a bezel, make an extra one, fill it with concrete, and see what you come up with. Thanks for joining us, and I will be seeing you soon. Bye for now. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us 
for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.